Here we'll be uh, giving an example of how to properly set up a vacuum box uh, with a tool, uh, with a mold. Uh, so the first thing we're going to be looking at is the vacuum box itself. Um, the type of material you want to make the, bo make the box out of would be a furniture grade plywood. Uh, you wouldn't want to use MDF because MDF is porous and uh, the vacuum uh, can escape through the pores in the MDF. We want this to be uh, a sealed box as airtight as possible. And by box, uh, what we mean is we have a top surface, we have a bottom surface, and then we have a hollow chamber on the inside. Okay, so when we're constructing the box, uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that uh, we leave a, a chamber on the inside here for the vacuum to distribute throughout. So if we were to open this box up, what we would see is uh, four side walls, about an inch thick, all the way around. Then we would see a baffle running through here and a baffle running through here, not connecting uh, to the outside wall because we want our vacuum to be able to distribute throughout the inside of the box. Here we can see uh, what the inside of the vacuum box look like and uh, you can see what I'm referring to about the outer side wall and the interior baffles. And the baffles are uh, so the box doesn't collapse in on itself when the vacuum is applied. If you didn't put the baffles in, uh, then more than likely the top surface is, is just going to bow in. Uh, so you want to make sure you put those. And you can see uh, that the vacuum would be able to freely flow throughout the interior of the box. Okay, so back to the construction of the box. Um, the way that this has been put together, uh, we put it together with uh, brad staples. And we've also sealed it with silicone. Uh, so when we put the box together, uh, we put down a nice layer of silicone. Then we put down our sidewalls, we put in our baffles, uh, the silicone holds it in place, uh, then we take our staples and staple it all together, then we put another layer of silicone on the baffles and sidewalls, and then we would attach our top surface, which is what we're looking at here. It's also very important to put a, uh, a very thin layer of uh, silicone around the very edge of the box because uh, if you look at the edge of the plywood here there's a potential for vacuum being able to seep through uh, if there's a pinhole or just a, a very small hole uh, can can lose you quite a bit of vacuum and uh, you won't get a, uh, a very good part from that so uh, the next thing we'll look at will be the bottom of the box Okay, so uh, looking at the bottom of the box, uh, you can see our, our inlet port here, and this is where we would attach our flange. Um, if you take a look at the flange, uh, it's just a standard one inch flange. Um, the way we would attach this is we wanna use 100% uh, silicone, just like we would use on the rest of the box. Just like that. Uh, we would go ahead, we would put a, uh, a nice bead of silicone around there. We would attach our flange and then we would use screws to screw it down to the bottom of the box. Okay, uh, and then we want to let that cure, we want the entire box to cure for at least a day uh, until we're sure that the, the silicone is relatively cured. So the next thing we'll look at is uh, how to properly set up a mold. Um, if we look at the top of the box here, uh, at this time, uh, the way that this box was made, uh, the only source of vacuum is coming from this hole. That's the only place you're going to get vacuum. And if you cover the hole, you're not going to be getting any vacuum through there. If you block the hole, you're not going to be getting any vacuum. So one way to set this up is if we wanted to set up a, a mold, let's say we wanted to set up this lion's face. So if, uh, if we were to take our mold and just lay it over the top of our hole like this, we wouldn't be able to get any vacuum because the mold would be covering the vacuum hole. So there's a couple ways that you can uh, get the vacuum to the tool. One of the ways being with this particular setup is to space the tool up. Now here we're just using standard everyday washers. You can just lay them out like this. And then we put our mold on top. And now the vacuum can actually reach the outside perimeter of the mold and it can draw down into those corners. Okay.
the uh, the other and, and more ideal way uh, to get vacuum to the mold uh, would you know considering that this is a hollow box so anywhere that we were to drill a hole within the box we would get vacuum through that hole so what we'd want to do is we'd want to draw an outline of the mold on the box like so And then we would take a, a very fine uh, drill bit. Uh, this here, uh, it's very hard to see, uh, is a number 60 drill bit. Uh, that's, that's American. Um, so you're looking at a very, very fine, if you can see, uh, in relationship to my finger, how small this actually is. And what we would do is we would come in here, and then about every mm, inch to inch and a half around this distance, we would put a hole all the way around. Okay, so then when we place our mold back into position here, we have vacuum holes all throughout the, the outer edge of the mold, and the vacuum can draw down into those corners. Another thing to keep in mind is uh, when we're working with a mold uh, with a lot of detail such as this one, um, it's going to be very difficult for the vacuum to get into these crevices and uh, all this more, more detailed area. So what we'd want to do is use our same drill bit and we would want to uh, drill directly into the mold, through the mold, so it reaches the vacuum underneath. So it would go through the mold and inside of the vacuum chamber and the vacuum can seep through the box into the mold. The next thing we're going to want to look at is uh, how the vacuum box is set up in the machine, uh, the relationship to the clamping frame itself, uh, and then just a few other little detail things. So uh, what we're looking at here is an actual formed plastic part uh, of that same lion's face that we were working with earlier. And uh, there's a few key things uh, that you want to uh, look at here. Now the first thing I would take a look at is how are we containing the vacuum within the top of this box? Okay, so if we look at the outside perimeter, obviously this is the box, okay, that's the shape of the box. And what's happening is when the box meets the hot plastic, it penetrates through that line of plastic. The, the plastic itself will create a seal around the edge of the box, okay? It's gonna seal around the edge of the top of this box and we're gonna contain our vacuum within only the top of the box. So if the plastic's not allowed to seal uh, around this edge, you're gonna be losing vacuum out the side, you're gonna be losing vacuum all over the place. One other thing that we can do uh, if we're finding that we're having issues with our vacuum seeping out and we uh, have suspicions that it's coming out from the edge here is uh, we can make a more solid contact point uh, than is already available with just the plywood alone. So the way we would do that is uh, you would construct, you would fabricate a, uh, a steel uh, lip just like this one here and this is made from steel and it's welded on all four corners, seamed perfectly, no pinholes, okay? Uh, and this would fit just around the box like so. You want a nice snug fit. And then you want to leave a, uh, a little bit of a raised lip. You want the steel lip to be higher than the top surface of the box. Um, you could do as little as an eighth of an inch and as much as a quarter of an inch. It's not really going to matter as long as it's not lower than the top surface because then it's completely defeating the purpose. So the way we would attach this is we would screw it into the box, okay? And then we would come back through again with our silicone and then we would silicone this bottom corner all the way across around the outer edge here and just make sure you have a nice strong bead of silicone around the entirety of this rim.
Okay, so we have our vacuum box and, and tool installed in the machine. And uh, one of the things I wanted to take a look at uh, was where the plastic is being clamped in relationship to where, where the vacuum box sits when it comes up and, and is in its final position. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna, the, the vacuum box is in the up position now. I'm gonna open the clamping frame. And from here you can get a, a very uh, clear understanding of exactly how much distance is from where the plastic is clamped where the plastic is clamped uh, to where the upper edge of that vacuum box is. And the reason that we want this is because we, we want a solid contact around the edge here. It needs to have a solid contact. If, if this box was too low, then the plastic could drape over this edge, not contacting this edge, thus not creating a seal on the, topper, uh, the top surface of the box. So we're going to uh, go ahead and form a part here, um, keeping in mind everything that's been discussed earlier in this video. Uh, so before we get started, we're gonna take a note of a couple things. You know, we wanna make sure that our oven's on, uh, obviously, and that it's been allowed to preheat for about 10 minutes. Uh, after it's preheated, you can go ahead and turn your vacuum pump on. And you can hear that buzzing away down there. Uh, the other key thing we want to do is make sure that our vacuum valve is closed. Uh, the vacuum valve is in the horizontal position, in the closed position. And what's happening right now is our vacuum tanks, which we can see here, what they're doing is they're building a vacuum and they're storing that vacuum. I'm going to go ahead and insert some plastic into the machine and uh, let it start heating up. Uh, once it's ready, we'll, we'll go ahead and raise the table and open the vacuum. Uh, okay, so our plastic's been heating up for uh, a minute or two, uh, so we just want to take a look at exactly where we're at with this material. So we'll push the oven back. And the most important thing is that the edges and corners are nice and soft. You should be able to poke your finger through there and it should stretch. Uh, the center of the material is naturally going to heat up. The last portion of the material to heat up are going to be the edges and the corners. And if they're not nice and soft, then they're not going to be able to wrap around the top edge of the box solidly, and you're not going to get a good seal around the top edge of the box. Okay, so our plastic has reached the proper forming parameters, so I'm going to roll the oven back raise the table and open the vacuum. Now if we take a look here at the actual box itself, the uh, material's still quite soft and the material was allowed to create a very solid contact point around the edge of the box. Again, that contains the vacuum on the top of the box and allows it to get to the areas where we want it to go as opposed to seeping out the side or going somewhere where we don't need it.